And New Zealand expects revenue to continue to soften in the second half of its financial year as it deals with more challenging market conditions than in recent years. The airline reported net profit after tax of $152 million in the six months to December 31. That's 34% down from the $232 million in the same period a year earlier. Its earnings before taxation were $211 million. That's down 35%. Operating revenue of $2.9 billion was up 7.1% over the half, offset by 14% increased operating expenditure, and that includes a 28% rise in fuel price, which makes up the airline's second largest cost. After several years of tailwinds pushing profits up, the airline has been hit by those rising fuel prices, slowing inbound tourism, and malfunctioning Dreamliner aircraft, which have kept a number of its planes grounded at any one time. The airline slashed fares on domestic routes this week. Fonterra has advised shareholders it won't be paying an interim dividend as its forecast earnings range has been reduced to 15 to 25 cents a share. But it's told its farmer supplies it will increase its 2018-19 forecast Farmgate milk price range to 6.30 to 6.60 per kilogram milk solids up from 6 to 6.30. Chairman John Monaghan says a decision on any full year dividend will be made at the end of the financial year depending on the co-op's earnings and balance sheet position. In December, Fonterra had forecast full-year earnings of 25 to 35 cents a share. Meanwhile, Mr Monaghan says Fonterra needs a fundamental change in direction if it's to deliver to its full potential. Fonterra will provide an update on the strategy and the progress on March 20th when it delivers its interim result. Michael Hill International's new CEO, Daniel Bracken, is plugging rejuvenation as the jewellery retailer continues to suffer in a competitive environment. The company reported underlying EBIT of 29.6 million Australian in the six months to December. That's down 16% on the same period a year earlier. Group net profit rose 125%, but that jump was due to one-off write-downs the year before from the closure of the Emma and Rowe and US businesses. Mr Bracken, who took over the reins in November, was not satisfied with the first half performance but says it reflects a business in transition. A strategy overhaul was announced last August to build online ca- capability, and increase customer loyalty, release more uniquely branded collections, strengthen the brand position and enhance operational execution. Marlborough Lines Directors and Marlborough Electric Power Trustees say there is nothing fishy about the acquisition of Yeelands Estate Wines and will defend any allegations to the contrary. Wellington law firm Wigley & Company is rallying a group of concerned Marlborough Lines consumers seeking full disclosure about several matters relating to its involvement with the award-winning winemaker. The National MP for Kaikoura, Stuart Smith, says some questions have been raised that need answers. Mr Smith, a former New Zealand wine growers chairman requested documents that detail steps taken by the board in its purchase of the company, board minutes and advice on the Yearland's purchase, but after a week is still waiting for the promised documents. Well, results season continues with a shower and tapware designer Methvin reporting slight revenue growth for the six months to December 31. Its underlying net profit after tax for the six months was $3.45 million. That's an increase of 7.9% on the same period last year. However, one-off costs of $1 million incurred during the period meant reported net profit after tax fell 23.6%. To New Zealand King Salmon, for the six months ending December 31, its sales were down 13% due to harvest seasonality and lower fish numbers carried forward from the 2018 full year. For the first half of the 1819 financial year, its net profit remained steady at $15.1 million, compared with 15.7 in the previous corresponding period. Geoop, the workplace management app developer, lifted total revenue 24% in the first half of 2019, cut its EBITDA loss by 59% and expects to break even by the middle of the year. The Auckland-based company posted total revenues of $2.53 million in the six months to December 31, compared with $2.03 million in the year before. And TVNZ has reported slight revenue growth for the six months to December 31, driven by steady TV advertising revenue and growth in online advertising. Revenue up 3.1 million or 1.8% to 173.5 mil. Net profit after tax down 37.5% to 10.7 mil after accounting for a negative unrealised foreign exchange difference of 4.1 million. To tomorrow, NBR's Jill South investigates the call for businesses to take urgent action 
on rising sea levels. For more on that and other stories, just head to our website, nbr.co.nz, and enjoy your evening. 